and he threw that right hook and just Oof. boom. That was Rampage had that ridiculous one punch power. That Vanderlei fight's another example. Yeah. God damn, he uncorked that left hook on the button. You're going nine nine. You know, I mean. nobody had ever done. I mean, Crow Cop. To, he hit him a gang of times before yeah. he flatlined him. He he was lighting Vanderlei yeah. up in that fight because the first time they fought, it was an incredible fight. But Krokop just really wasn't good on the ground yet. No, no and he his had takedown defense very, wasn't there. Very little. Very little. Yeah. And they had a strange rules fight where it was like you could only stay on the ground for a little bit of time. It was like a minute or something. some. It's, it's like short period. Some short period. Yeah. So. Krokop would just lock him up in a guard yeah. and try to hang on. I don't know what rules they had. It was a weird it was, rule it was, thing. It was pride. They did everything. But wanted. then in the second fight, Krokop had had a few MMA fights, yeah. and he got his timing down. And that was when Krokop was Krokop, man. He was dangerous. He was, God. That, that was a scary man. I mean, he Woo! had, again, one of the scariest tools to ever exist yeah, in, ever. in MMA that he knocked out multiple people with. And you know, the thing about Krokop is I feel like UFC fans, again, don't appreciate the majesty that was Crow Cop no. in his prime. We got him after a long yeah. career, a hard career against Fedor and against Josh Barnett. I mean, he fought some fucking battles. battles. So when by the time we got him in the UFC, he had been in quite a few like real, real wars. Well, and think of all the heavyweight kickboxing fights he had. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he fought a lot of K1 fights I against mean, the top guys. Yeah. High level, high level yeah. guys. That Mark Hunt fight is a classic <laughs> yes. one, man. Classic. They had some wars in, in, in K1, man. People had, I mean, he was uh, in the mix with some of the best fighters in the world over there. Yeah, you got, you know, you got the Bunjowski and mm -hmm. the, a small, small Alistair, um, Peter Ayuritz, you know, the, the Tyrone Spongs. Like the, the, the Dutch group of kickboxers, the, the heavyweights are, I mean, and these guys have like 100 heavyweight fights, 200 heavyweight fights. I mean, this is insane. I mean, you, yeah. someone my size, okay, you have 200 Thai fights in Thailand. It's still, it's still pretty gnarly. It's, it's more than gnarly. It's crazy. But, I mean, double the size and almost the same amount of fights. I mean, that's, that's, that's just that's completely insane. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, dude had 29 kickboxing fights. On record. On record. And then 41 MMA fights. God damn. Yeah. Yeah. He had some great fucking K1 fights too, man. Really fun K. See, he was one of the best guys to come over. Even though he wasn't one of the best K1 guys, he was yeah. like just below the the elite of the elite. Like it wasn't just below like the Grand Prix winners. Yeah, exactly. Before he, he did win a Grand Prix recently. Yeah, right. It was in uh, it was the European one or something. Like yeah, that. something like that. I'll 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 find out and give him the credit he deserves. But um, when he. Uh, when he came over, he was he had the one thing that a lot of people didn't have: ridiculous speed and explosion. And he had like I think he had a karate background, right? Is, I think is that correct? Think, when, he, I think when he first started, yeah, I think he started like I'm sure that was a long. Didn't long he time like ago. John Claude Van Damme movies or something like that, and learned how to kick that way, and then <laughs> got any, something crazy like that? I believe. <laughs> I believe that that's like how it got started. I think he like was a Jean Claude Van Damme fan and I then hope, got I into karate so. from that. But his fucking kicks are so unusual. Like the for, angle, the speed, oh, the speed, the the, speed was ridiculous. Yeah. And he, he's got, I mean, horse legs. Like yeah. those things are huge. So of course those, <laughs> those, yeah. those kicking you in the face is is gonna not feel good. And he again, I mean, it was like he had that weight. It was like you know two thirty ish, yeah, two twenty eight. Exactly. He said, yeah, two twenty eight is what he like. Um, um, the, the average that he weighed when he was in his prime. And it was just scary yeah. fast. Incredible. When he knocked out Bob Sapp, yeah, Bob a... Sapp was three <laughs> fucking 70, and Body Mirko Krokop, no, he right-handed him, or left-handed him, a straight left to the eye socket, remember? Oh, and broke his, okay, and then he, uh, yeah. Yeah, he broke his yeah, eye broke socket. His I think he kicked him before that. Okay. I remember, but, I remember a kick to the body that yeah. Bob, Bob See if you can find that. See if you can find uh, Krokop versus Bob Sapp. Because that was one of Krokop's best fights. And he was a, it was a kickboxing fight, yeah. too. You know, that was back when oh. this was a, a guy, Bob Sapp, who had beaten Ernesto Hoost, who most people think was the greatest ever, or one of the top yeah. ten guys ever, for sure. Yeah. I shouldn't say the greatest ever. Like, even Dutch guys say, but it's, it's kind of between him, when he's in his prime, or, like, uh, Rob Kamen, yeah. or... Uh, or of course Ramon Deckers, but yeah. Deckers gets the most credit because he fought the lightest guys. Yeah, exactly. I read that. Ramon Deckers is, Look at this is fight. one of my idols. Look at this shit, dude. This is Bob Sapp versus Mirko Krokop. Mirko is literally almost two hundred pounds lighter than him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
He's actually a hundred. He's a probably no bullshit. A hundred and fifty pounds lighter than him, easily, which is incredible. And I mean, he's he just sucks, man. And he's chasing Krokop around, and he gets a hold of him, and he like trying to rabbit punch him, yeah. like he's trying to dirty box him. He just wants to club you to death. He's, he's yeah. that big. He just has to to lay one on you, and you're and you're done. But Mirko was strong enough and fast enough to keep him off, yeah. which is the difference between his style and Ernesto Hoos. Though Ernesto Hoos is the better kickboxer, like technically than Mirko. Oh yeah. What makes Mirko so dangerous in MMA is that he's explosive, and it'll dart in and blast yeah. you. He'll take a chance yeah. and do something wild where yeah, a guy he like you with something hard. Yeah, dude. It's some not ridiculous just a, shit. Not just a feeler. I mean, that, that's he wants to. Ugh. Yeah, he will go after you. Oh, I forgot. I forgot he got ball clipped. He got ball clipped, it looks like, or something happened there. Very rarely do you get pokes in pride, too. That's another That's interesting thing. Well, this it, is actually it, it, a kickboxing belt. those but fat fingers on. Yeah, fat fingers, and it, apparently the, the way it's designed, it makes you uh, curl your hand more, uh, keep it curled, whereas oh, okay. the UFC ones, do you feel that the UFC ones make your hand straighten out? I never thought about it. I'll have to check that out next time. Well, they say that the pride ones were like curved. They had like yeah, a curve to them. Actual, yeah, they, they were actually bent curved where the UFC ones are straight. Yeah, and as, as you, especially as a fight goes on, you relax your hands yeah. maybe a little bit. Like that would be a time where the pride one would be better yeah. because it would keep them kind of curved. That makes sense. Oh, so did he hit him with a body shot there? Back that up. I'm talking too much. People who are listening to this and watching this are getting two totally different experiences. Because <laughs> uh, I don't even know who has the... Uh, See, there's the body shot. Boom. Oh, yeah. Left okay, kick yeah. to the body and yeah. straight left to the face. Marco Krokop was a fucking savage back then, man. He was one of the most dangerous guys as far as, like, sniper strikers. Yeah. And then came into MMA and fought in Pride. Holy shit, were those some great fights. His knockouts in Pride are some of the all-time greatest highlight reel head kick knockouts. Yeah. <laughs> it's a the, series it's the of them. same thing. Yeah, Ego of Chanchkin. <laughs> boom! Alexander Milianenko. <laughs> boom! Just blasting dudes with that head kick. That Russian dude, Dos Carlos, with the, he oh, came yeah, in with yeah. the Luta Libre mask yeah. on. Head kick. Boom! Yeah, he was training with Marco Huas for that fight. And I remember thinking, like, dude, this guy's going to die. Oh. <laughs> because, you know, Marco was in our, was in, was in our area. And I had some friends that trained over there, and uh, I remember just like I would stop in there every once in a while, and I was just like, "Man, this guy's this guy's this guy might might actually die in this one." Yeah, he was amazing, man. Mirko, when he at at that level, that's like when he was at his very best. It was either before he was challenging Fedor, right right after. Yeah, it was somewhere in that area where it was him chasing after Fedor, 